All right, begin uh, material review. First, to begin, we have some sort of psi function. Given some sort of psi function, a plus psi b, then the complex conjugate is the negative imaginary term. I remember that if you take i times negative i, you get 1. For some negative i a, the e to that property is the same as cosine of a minus whatever this term is in the exponent, whatever its sign is here, the negative will be put in here. So, for example, if I had e to the negative i a, I'd have cosine a minus i sine a. Simple stuff. So, for complex numbers, on complex plane, we have, instead of the y and x axis, we have the i, imaginary, and the r, z, well, the, the z axis, the real axis. And here we have it going from the origin, some distance of r, uh, which, remember, you can have b... squared plus y squared plus z squared all of that with square root that's your r and then you have some sort of angle theta and you interest, interestingly enough you actually have a couple uh, of angles if you have uh, theta and psi then you can also have uh, in three dimensions, that you'd have you'd have a a perpendicular or orthogonal uh, axis coming out here, uh, but that's not for this. This is just for real and complex, or excuse me, real and imaginary. Some key relationships to point out uh, in quantum: the frequency is omega. Vibrational frequency is equal to the energy divided by the h bar. h bar is, well, Planck's constant is equal to h over 2 pi. And uh, similarly, we could write down here that the period t equal to pi over omega. So really you could rewrite this and, and solve for some period of oscillation. Taking a partial derivative, you know how to do that. Laplacian operator is, uh, is used on, this will be applied to some sort of psi. that has terms of x, y, and z. Linear combinations of wave functions is just uh, c1 psi1 plus c2 psi2. Probability of finding x in a range is taking these psi functions and squaring them. So if you take psi that is uh, dependent on time, so your time dependent Schrodinger equation, for example, is, a, is uh, also time dependent, you take the these two squared. You take the complex conjugate times the psi function equals set equal to one. This makes sense, right? If you take if you take psi and you square it, it's let's say it's I don't know, let's say it's this, and you square it, then it becomes 
this, and then the probability of finding it anywhere under that curve has to be equal to 1. Now, if you have to normalize this, once you square this, you have you have to have uh, these be normalized. The normalization factor that we that is used to scale the psi functions can be given by just some constant a could be c. So you have a star psi star times a times psi still equal to 1 over this range. You take the coefficients out and you're left with some sort of coefficient that you then apply to your psi functions.